Hi guys, welcome to Main Meister's High School Kerfuffle Season 4. Before I reveal what the plan is for this season, we'll review the scores from our Champions Choice game last week, and we'll hear what people's favourite games were from last season. So last week, as a stopgap between seasons, we had a choice from our Champion of Season 3, Andrew. His choice was Star Force, released by Takan in 1984. For 1984, this game is great, fast paced and a good level of challenge. Last week, I described it as generic, and I stick by that. Nothing really stands out to me playing in 2020. Plenty of other shmups have bosses, or level design, or weapons that bring something different and are memorable, whereas this is lacking anything particularly interesting in those spaces. It's a solid game, just without any nostalgia for me, it'll be pretty forgettable. Also, given this wasn't part of the main season, I didn't put as much time into it as I might have done otherwise. But a few people definitely did, so let's take a look at the scores. We had 15 submissions last week, which given this is between seasons, is pretty good going, and maybe reflects that people want to play a few shmups, which we'll be definitely getting this season. We had a return from Panther, down in 13th. He likes a shmup, so I expect we'll see him a bit more this season. Wee Bob is down in an uncharacteristic 9th. He probably felt similar to me, and I'm just ahead in 8th. Colin is in 7th, and began to enjoy the game during his livestream last week, after not a great first impression. From 5th onwards, we've got the guys who put a bit more time into this, and must enjoy the game. Mark is in 5th on 350,000, Paul and Ian both hit 400,000, 10 Shearers did a great 650,000, but way out in front, on one to watch for next season, with a few more shmups appearing, is Big Jaffa, with an excellent 860,000. Well done Juff, and hopefully that's a good warm up for the coming games. Regarding people's favourite game of last season, I got a number of people letting me know their thoughts. For me, I was torn between Asteroids Deluxe, Carnival and Mr. Do. All three of these I thought were excellent and was able to play for a good amount of time without getting overly frustrated, which was definitely not the case for some of the other games we had. Overall, I'm probably going to go for Mr. Do though. It vastly exceeded my expectations and is way more than a Dig Dug clone. As you can see here, this is also reflected with the choices of favourite games I received. I've got the number of people who played that game that week, and the number of votes I received for that game, including my own. Outside of Mr. Do that got 5 nominations as best game of the season, the votes were pretty spread. Other than Choplifter and Volfide, every game got a vote, which for a diverse set of games I think is pretty good, and reflects the different preferences of the people playing. Some people's favourite games were other people's worst. It'd be boring if we all liked the same thing. This now wraps up Season 3 with Andrew as our top player, and Mr. Do as our top game. Now on to what we're doing for Season 4. So last season, we did random selection from submissions by our regular players, which I feel worked pretty well. But we didn't get as many heavy hitter games as I'd liked, and I certainly would have liked a few more shmups in there. So to resolve this, I'm basing this season around the reason that most of us are taking part in the challenge. And this season is going to be one of Mainmeister's favourites. Most of us are fans of Alan, and so there is going to be natural overlap with game preferences. The games we know Alan likes were also fairly popular choices in the submissions I received last season, and maybe it will tempt him to take part again, especially with his new main cap. So kicking off Season 4 is the arcade classic from IRM, and that's R-Type. Released in 1987, this horizontal shmup is considered one of the greatest games of all time. It saw inspiration from games that had gone before, such as Gradius, but also from popular culture such as the Aliens film franchise, which was big at the time. The game itself follows the formula of games released previously, where there are defined levels and a boss at the end. Compared to Star Force that we had last week, this is what I mean by it being memorable. The variety of level and boss design makes the game stand out, and why it is looked upon favourably by so many. There is also nice variation of the weapons, without the arguably excessive complexity of Gradius. You have the main low power rapid fire weapon. If you hold down the fire button, you build up a more powerful shot, and there are weapon upgrades to be found. But most interestingly, there's the auxiliary weapon called the Force that can also act as a shield, adding an extra dynamic. This game is also known for its high difficulty, so it could be a frustrating one. But hopefully, the game's quality makes up for that. Given the popularity of this game, it saw a huge number of home ports and Alan did a nice live arcade perfect my ass that's viewable as a recording on his channel. We'll be playing the world ROM with the default settings, and I'll put the competition rules down in the description. I'm expecting this to be a pretty popular one, 
So I hope you're all playing some R-Type this week, and I'll be back next week with the results. See you then.